in this video we are going to study regarding the doubly reinforced beam in the previous video we have studied regarding the design of singly reinforced beam so in this way we will study regarding the design of doubly reinforced beam so let us start with the problem so in this problem we have a rectangular beam of size 250 by 600 mm which is having a effective span of 7 meters and which is supporting a service load of 26.25 kN per meter excluding self fit so here they have given the values excluding self fit so therefore self fit of this beam has to be included then next is they have given the effective cover d dash is equal to 50 mm design the beam for flexure and shear the next is they have said to check the beam depth for control of deflection so if you see in the previous problem also we have checked for deflection and we have checked for shear so here also we will check for deflection and shear in this problem the next is uh, design stress values for different strain in steel are given below so for a given strain these are the stress values based on this this will be further used i will explain you where it will be used further so if you see the given data they have all uh, in the previous problem in the singly reinforced beam we had fixed the beam dimensions but here in this problem they have given the beam dimensions that is b is equal to 250 mm d is equal to 600 mm so for example if they have not given the breadth and depth you can assume certain breadth and depth and you can proceed further and you have to check the check for shear and deflection so then next is they have given effective cover that is 50 mm uh, effective span as 7 meters they have given service load of 26.25 kN per meter m20 grade of concrete and fe415 steel so if you see we have to calculate now effective depth of the beam so for example if this is the beam and if you to have the reinforcement like this so from the center till this stop this distance is nothing but effective depth so now already they have given overall depth as 600 so this depth they have given this depth is 50 mm so we require this 600 minus of 50 if you do we are going to get the effective depth so first step is we will calculate the effective depth <coughs> 600 minus of 50 that is equal to 550 mm then next is in the previous case uh, previous problem we had uh, calculated the effective span but here in this case directly they have given the effective span or otherwise if the clear span is given we have two criteria out of which we have to take the least values so on that basis also you can calculate if the effective span is not given to us then next is we will try to calculate the self weight of the beam so beam size is 0 0.25 by 0 0.6 so per meter span we will try to calculate the self weight of the beam and density of concrete is 25 rcc is 25 so if you multiply you will get answer as 3.75 kilo newton per meter then next they have given the service load that is 26.25 kilo newton per meter so if you are going to add up these two loads we are going to get the total load that is 26.25 plus 3.75 we are going to get answer as 30 kN per meter so we will try to calculate the factored load that is we will multiply it by 1.5 to this value so 1.5 multiplied by 30 we will get answer as 45 kN per meter then next based on that load uh, we will try to calculate what is the max, uh, bending moment and shear force so bending moment for a given UDL that is equal to WL square by 8 so our factored load multiplied by effective span square divided by 8 we will get answer as 275.625 kN meter then next is shear force that is WL by 2 so therefore 45 into 7 divided by 2 we will get answer as 157.5 kilo newtons then next is we will try to check the section so already we know this xu max by d value that is 0.48 so many times i had shown you so uh, 
if you want i'll show you that also so this value is already we have seen that is x u max by d value for fe415 steel that is 0.48 which is being given in page number 70 that is x u max by d value is 0.48 so we will try to calculate what is the limiting moment so formula is 0.36 fck bd square into x u max by d into bracket of 1 minus 0.42 x u max by d so we have 0.36 fck is 20 b is 250 d is 550 square multiplied by x u max by d is 0.48 that will substitute 1 minus of 0.42 into x u max by d is 0.48 so if you calculate the limiting moment it is coming as 208 208.66 kilonewton meter but our bending moment how much it is coming it is 275 so if you compare with this uh, 275 to 208 so movement which is coming mu is greater than mu lim limiting moment so therefore this section has to be designed as a singly reinforced beam for example if mu is less than mu lim then you can design it as a singly reinforced beam but here mu is greater than mu lim so for this additional moment we will try to provide the compression reinforcement and we will try to design it as a doubly reinforced section. So now if you want to design it as a doubly reinforced section we have to provide the compression steel as well as the this is tension steel and compression steel that is AST and ASC. So first let us try to calculate the area of tension reinforcement area of tension reinforcement if you see uh, this also already we have covered in uh, previous problems also in the analysis of doubly reinforced beam we have seen so once again let me revise you AST will be equal to AST1 plus AST2 AST is nothing but the total tensile reinforcement AST1 is nothing but area of tensile reinforcement for singly reinforced section for limiting moment so this we have to remember that is for a limiting moment AST1 value will be for a limiting moment value AS2 will be based on this value so let us try to calculate now area of steel so XU max by D so that is equal to 0 0.48 we have so if you bring this D somewhere here so that is 0 0.48 multiplied by 550 we will get answer as 264 mm then next is already we have seen this AS how to calculate the area of steel so formula is AST is equal to 0 0.5 into FCK divided by F of I into 1 minus of square root of 1 minus 4.6 into MU divided by FCK BD square multiplied by B into D so this formula is very important we have to remember this formula so let us try to calculate this value that is MU by BD square so that is MU by BD square that is MU LIM limiting moment we have to consider so we have to remember here this is the limiting moment we are calculating AST1 that is based on the limiting moment so limiting moment is 208.66 into 10 raised to 6 so previously what answer we had got this was in kilo newton meter we have converted to newton mm that is multiplied by 10 raised to 6 divided by breadth is 250 mm depth is 550 square so therefore this will be 2.759 so this value will try to substitute here and let us try to calculate so that is 0.5 fck is 20 f of y is 415 into 1 minus of square root of 1 minus of 4.6 into mu is mu by bd square this value is 2.759 divided by fck is 20 multiplied by b is 250 and d is 550 if you substitute we will get answer as 1310 mm square this is the area of steel for a balanced section or in other ways like uh, you can equate this total compressive force to the total tensile force and based on this also you can calculate and ultimately you will get the same answer you will get approximately the same answer then next is we will try to calculate AST2 
additional tensile reinforcement so how do we calculate now if you see here also that formula it is being given uh, so that is uh, mu minus mu lm is equal to fsc into ac into d minus of t dash that means <coughs> this is the ultimate uh, moment which is coming minus of the moment which is resisted by a balanced singly reinforced section so the extra additional moment what is going to come that we will try to calculate that is mu2 for that we will try to calculate ast to additional tensile reinforcement which has to be provided so mu is 275.625 minus mu lm is 208.66 so if you calculate you will get answer as 66.96 kilo newton meter then next mu2 is equal to 0.87 f of phi into ast2 into d minus of d dash so already we have seen this formula so we know mu that is 66.96 into 10 raised to 6 0.87 we have f phi is 415 this ast2 we will try to calculate d is 550 and d dash is 50 so if you substitute we will get answer as 371 mm square 371 mm square then next is we'll try to calculate the additional compression reinforcement which we'll provide it at top in this case so therefore so as to calculate that we have to calculate the strain in steel so that formula also it is being given in the code book that is 0 0.0035 into xu max by minus d dash divided by xu max so based on that formula itself we'll try to calculate 0 0.0035 into xcli minus d dash divided by xcli that is 0 0.0035 we have xcli that is 0 0.48 multiplied by d 550 if you multiply you'll get answer as 264 that we'll try to keep minus d dash is nothing but the effective cover that is 50 divided by 264 if you substitute you'll get the strain in the steel as 2.837 into 10 raised to minus 3 then next is uh, initially if you see they had given one chart that is the strain and the stress value based on this we will try to calculate the stress the strain is 2.837 uh, into 10 raised to minus 3 that is nothing but 0.002837 somewhere here it is going to come in between these two values so what will be the stress value if we are going to interpolate between these two values we will get fsc value this stress is nothing but fsc value we have fsc that will be that will be getting it as 352 newton per mm square so that value will try to substitute here in this equation that is fsc into asc so you can see here that is uh, this formula will try to use fsc into asc that is equal to 0 0.87 f of y into ast2 0.87 f of phi into ast2 so fsc value is 352 0.87 we have f of uh, y is 415 ast2 just now we have calculated and fsc also if you bring it this side somewhere here this also we have calculated so if you substitute all these values so we will get asc value as 381 mm square 381 mm square the next is ast that is nothing but the total tensile reinforcement that is equal to AST1 plus AST2. So therefore 1316 plus 381. So that we will be getting it as 1687 mm square. So then next is area of compression reinforcement that is 381 mm square. So this will be provided at the bottom. This will be provided at the top. For example if you are going to take this beam so area of 381 square will provide it somewhere here and this reinforcement will provide it at, at the bottom so now we have to calculate how many bars have to be provided at bottom as well as on the top so if you see the area of uh, this is 1687 mm square now we will try to calculate the number of bar so let us assume uh, 20 mm dia bar let us assume a bar of 20 mm dia so if you calculate area of one bar that is pi by 4 into 20 square if you do we will get answer as uh, 314 so this is nothing but this much is required 
so therefore uh, number of uh, bars will be equal to 1687 divided by 314 if you do area of one bar so you'll get somewhere around the five point something we can provide it as approximately six bars so we can provide six bars of 20 mm dia six bars of 20 mm dia in the tension zone so at the bottom we can provide six bars of 20 mm dia then next is this remaining area of steel in compression that is at the top we will try to provide at the top so now area required is 381 mm square so let us assume a bar of 16 mm dia so area of uh, a single bar will be pi by 4 into 16 square we will be getting answer as uh, 201 so then next if you want to calculate number of uh, bars so that will be equal to 381 total area required divided by area of one bar so nearly you will get it as two bars so we will provide two bars of 16 mm dia in the compression zone so this is how we will provide the bars then next is uh, we have to check for shear and we have to check for the deflection if you want to check for shear let us calculate this tau v value it has to be checked with tau c value so tau v is equal to v u by b into d v u is nothing but the shear what we have already calculated that is 157.5 into 10 raised to 3 divided by b is 250 and d is 550 so if you calculate we will get answer as 1.145 newton per mm square so that has to be checked with tau c max it is uh, less than 2.8 newton per mm square therefore we need not revise any section so we can proceed with the section then next is we have to check this tau v value with tau c value so as to calculate this tau c value we have to calculate the area of steel provided that is pi by 4 into d square that is 20 square multiplied by we have provided 6 bars so therefore area of steel provided will be 1884 mm square 1884 mm square then next is percentage of steel will be equal to AST by BD multiplied by 100 that is 1884 divided by 215 to 550 multiplied by 100 so that will be equal to 1.37 this is the percentage of steel so from table number 19 of IS 456 2000 we can calculate the value of tau c that is uh, so here in the shear they have given table number 19 design shear strength of concrete so we have calculated this value percentage of steel so percentage of steel value is 1.37 somewhere here it is going to come below this then next is uh, we have m20 grade of concrete somewhere here it is going to come that is after point uh, between point 0.67 and point 0.72 so if you interpolate we will get answer as point 0.69 newton per mm square this value has to be compared with tau v value so tau v is 1.145 tau c is 0.69 so tau v is greater than tau c tau v is greater than tau c so therefore we have to design this section for shear we have to design for shear so now let us calculate that shear reinforcement the shear that has to be resisted by the shear reinforcement other than the concrete let us try to calculate so v u s is equal to v u minus tau c into v into d v u is nothing but the total shear which is coming 157.5 into 10 raised to 3 minus of tau c is 0 0.69 v is 250 d is 550 if you substitute you will get answer as 62.625 kilo newtons then next is uh, we will assume 8 mm dia 2 left stirrups of fi 250 newton mild steel that is 250 newton per mm square so area of steel of this one bar that is equal to pi by 4 into 8 square it is a 2 left therefore multiplied by 2 so therefore this will be equal to 100 mm square then next we will try to calculate the spacing that is 0.87 f of i into as into d divided by v us 
that is 0 0.87 f y is 250 as is area of uh, shear steel that is uh, 100 uh, d is 550 vus is equal to 62.625 uh, into uh, kilonewton we have multiplied by 1000 so therefore the spacing will be somewhere around 191 mm so this has to be checked with the given clauses what we have the spacing is 191 this is one clause another thing is that 0.75 times of the effective depth that will be equal to 412.5 mm the next is minimum we have to provide 300 mm so out of this whichever is least we will try to provide so therefore we are getting 191 mm so therefore we are going to provide 2 length 8 mm dia about uh, we, are, we have 191 mm so we can uh, round it off to somewhat lower values that is we can provide it at 180 mm center to center the next is we have to check for deflection we have to check for uh, deflection the next is already we have seen this in the previous problem also L by D ratio maximum permitted uh, L by D ratio that is equal to F1, F2, F3 into L by D basic where F1 is for tension reinforcement, F2 is for compression and F3 is for uh, flange section these are the modification factors what we have then next is let us try to calculate the value of F1 so if you want to calculate the modification factor for tension steel that is equal to based, uh, based on this percentage of steel and this FS value we will try to calculate so percentage of steel that is equal to 1.37 already we have calculated then next is this FS also already we have uh, uh, seen So let me show you that. So here they have given uh, li a limit state of uh, serviceability for deflection. So this has to be satisfied uh, based on the given criteria that is in 23.2.1. So you can see 23.2.1 that is uh, here they have given. So that is for control of deflection. This uh, L by D ratio for simply supported beam it is uh, 20 for a span up to 20 meters. So this criteria has to be satisfied and then next is uh, we have to uh, what you can say for tension reinforcement we have to multiply by modification factor then next for compression we have to multiply by this modification factor then next for flange section we have to multiply by another factor. So therefore uh, this uh, for ten, uh, tension reinforcement that is modification factor for tension reinforcement we have one formula that is uh, fs is equal to 0.58 f of y area of cross section of steel required by ast provided so this is we have 0.58 f of y is 415 ast required is 1687 ast provided is 1884 so therefore fs value is 216 newton per mm square 216 newton per mm square so now we have to uh, see this uh, 216 is going to come somewhere here the next is percentage of tension steel provided is uh, 1.37 so 1.37 this is 1.2 1.4 1.6 so 1.37 is going to come somewhere here we'll go somewhere here uh, then next is if you see so uh, this value is uh, 216 216 is going to come somewhere here in between so if you go on somewhere here it is approximately equal to 1 itself you can say this is 0.8 this is 1 1.2 it is approximately 0.1 itself so therefore we can take this uh, modification factor for tension steel as 1 
the next we will try to calculate the modification factor for compression steel that is F2 so for that also they have given modification factor for compression reinforcement based on the percentage of uh, steel our percentage of uh, steel is uh, 1.37 it is going to come somewhere uh, somewhere here in between this is 1 1.25 1 1.5 so 1.37 is going to come somewhere here and if you go somewhere here at the top and if you compare it somewhere here it will be somewhat like 1.33 you can have 1.33 you can have that is F2 then next is F3 that is uh, modification factor for a flange section as we have a rectangular section so therefore F3 value will be equal to 1 so L by D value also just now I had shown it is uh, 20 for a simply supported beam so therefore maximum L by D, D ratio that is provided is F1, F2, F3 multiplied by L by D basic so F1 is uh, 1 we have F2 is 1.33 F3 is nothing but uh, 1 for a flange section uh, as we are having rectangular section L by D basic is 20 so if you multiply you will get answer as 26.6 then next we have to check this with L by D provided so L is 7000 D is 550 we will get it as 12.72 so 12.72 it is less than 26.6 that is L by D maximum is greater than L by D provided our L by D provided is less so therefore this is satisfying the deflection criteria if it is not satisfying we have to revise the section and once again we have to design the section as it is satisfying we don't have any problem we can proceed with this problem we can do the detailing so this uh, after this we are going to do the detailing of this beam we can draw the cross section of the beam so here you can show we have two bars at the top and three bars at the uh, bottom these two bars are two bars of uh, 16 mm dia we have the next is we have at the bottom six bars of uh, 20 mm uh, dia the next you can show the longitudinal section of the beam so here you can show at the top you can show at the bottom you can show and you can show these uh, stirrups so this is uh, two bars of 16 mm dia so at the bottom two bars of uh, uh, six bars of uh, 20 mm dia you can show and this you can show it as two legged uh, 8 mm about 180 center to center so you can show the supports in this way you have to show the section you have to show this longitudinal section and you have to show the cross section also you have to show this cross section also the next is uh, you can take this problem as an assignment problem and you can submit it so if you have any further doubts you can contact me